Lane Kiffin has probably had the most eventful coaching career for a 42-year-old in the history of any level of football. Consider the ins and outs, the ups and downs, the twists and turns, the roller coaster ride through the likes of the University of Tennessee, USC, the Oakland Raiders. He has already had an NFL head coaching job, two major, major top-of-the-line head coaching jobs at the collegiate level. Then he stood on the sideline with Nick Saban through their myriad of back and forths and tirades and debates on the sideline and certainly proved himself as a play caller once again in that role and then moving on to Florida Atlantic, maybe his best coaching job without the obvious baggage and clutter and foolishness on the side. Lane Kiffin has taken a football program that has been awful for the better part of a decade, has not reached a bowl game, and just about everybody makes bowl games these days, and they've not been able to win the six games required since 2009, and they are suddenly a juggernaut at the Group 5 level. I would have liked to have seen them play a Toledo tonight or maybe somebody um, in the Power 5 as Northern Illinois will get the shot in in the quick lane bowl against Duke. But let's enjoy what we saw throughout this season from Lane Kiffin in resurrecting a football program. I just had somebody texted me just a few minutes ago asking me, Lane Kiffin, a 10-year commitment to Lane Kiffin? And I said, look at the remarkable job that he's done. Yes, he's been a train wreck in the past, and typically a track record repeats itself. Most likely it's going to come off the rails again at some point, but maybe not. It's worth the gamble. Florida Atlantic now 11-3 for the 2017 season with 10 consecutive wins and undefeated season as Conference USA champions. Annihilating Akron. These two teams should not have been on the field tonight in the Boca Raton Bowl 50-3. So let's consider what's coming back for Lane Kiffin. Quarterback Jason Driscoll, a junior this season, coming into his last season, a 66% passer, 15 touchdowns, four interceptions. He missed the first two games of the season, the losses to Navy and Wisconsin. His backup, Daniel Parr, a sophomore this season, statistically fared pretty well against the midship and, and the Badgers, 28 of 49, three touchdowns and one pick. But once they got Jason Driscoll in place, They were a juggernaut, of course, not facing the likes of Navy and Wisconsin, of course, but Jason Driscoll took the reins and led this offense. Devin Singletary is the name you probably know. 12 straight 100-yard games to finish off his junior campaign. A buck 24 tonight and three touchdowns against Akron. 1,920 rushing yards this season with 33 total touchdowns. He's back. He's just a sophomore. He's back for his junior campaign. At wide receiver, they've got their two best wide receivers coming back. Willie Wright, who caught 56 this year and six touchdowns. Caleb Woods coming back, averaging 27 yards per reception. He'll be a senior next season. And their top tight end, a junior to be in 2018, Harrison Bryant, 32 catches, five touchdowns, despite missing the final three games. And on defense, their best three playmakers, all come back for the Owls. Aziz Al-Shahir, 133 total tackles, and we didn't count tonight's play yet. The defensive stats aren't out yet. 133 total stops, 7.5 tackles for loss for him. Rashad Smith, also a linebacker, will be a junior next season. He had 89 stops, 10.5 tackles for loss and 5 sacks. And Jalen Young, who picked off seven passes from his safety position, will be a senior next year. All these guys come back. Plus, Lane Kiffin was asked after the game by ESPN about the early signing period and players' ability to sign on the dotted line starting today. And he said, hey, if they watch football tonight for three and a half hours, we put on display what we have to offer. And one of the commits in the house by far based on the ratings the crown jewel of this class for 2018 FAU dual threat quarterback at Jerry Bohannon out of Earl Arizona a four-star recruit surrounded by a ton of three stars on this team 
three stars don't typically uh, get anyone excited, especially the videos I produce are uh, of the elite Power 5 teams that gather in the five stars and a low to four stars. But three-star recruits, there are tons of three-star recruits running around on Sundays these days. What excites me about seeing Lane Kiffin come back in 2018 and beyond and seeing this group of skill position players and the top performers on defense coming back is to check out Florida Atlantic's 2018 non-conference schedule. Listen to this schedule. At Oklahoma, Air Force, Bethune-Cookman, at Central Florida. The Owls next season are playing Oklahoma, Air Force, and Central Florida. I'm not saying they're going to win those games, especially at Norman. But without Scott Frost at Central Florida and them... Uh, transitioning to their new head coach and, of course, Oklahoma on the road. It will be interesting to see Florida Atlantic with the domination that they proved on the field week in, week out against the lesser teams in Conference USA, whether they will be any kind of a factor. This could be the scary group of five, possibly. Uh, this is going to be a difficult non-conference to navigate to try to get through all those games. But if they pull off one of those, upsets and maybe even if it's not Oklahoma we could see a New Year's Six out of Lane Kiffin in Florida Atlantic in 2018. If you caught the ball game tonight if you've seen the Owls play this season have any more insight to provide I unfortunately have yet to see Florida Atlantic play this year. I think you understand how much college football I take in but uh, was not going to take in any of those 50 point blowouts and wasn't able to check out too much of tonight's game until it got out of hand. Would like to hear from you. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for the very best in college football coverage. And I say that very humbly. When I say that, I mean we bring on the best bloggers, broadcasters, writers across the board on a daily basis. Just check out the videos. And of course, you got to put up with my analysis as well. But I hope you join us. Uh, this is a college football community that we're building right here for discussion, debate, and we bounce off topics uh, off of each other. And you can see the, the commentary and the discussion and the debate uh, that ensues between all of you that I have a lot of fun reading as well. So let's talk to Florida Atlantic football or anything you'd like to bring up. If you have any uh, suggestions for topics, subjects, uh, teams, debates you'd like for me to address, certainly leave those in the comments section below as well. Right here on Mark Rogers TV.